So thank you for joining me on this short video in which we're discussing the role of negative emotions and how to deal with them. It's been my experience recently dealing with coaching clients and uh, people writing into me via email and writing on uh, comments in uh, my blog and just those people in my personal life that they're dealing with all these emotions that are coming up for them, particularly in the last two years as a result of this pandemic. And this pandemic has really brought up a lot of our negative emotions. Um, and it can be viewed in a number of contexts. And that is a um, these emotions were stored in the collective consciousness of mankind. And so in some respects, we are being called to heal these emotions. And so if we are unaware of them, we cannot address them, we cannot transform them, we cannot heal them. So by these emotions coming to the surface, it gives us an opportunity to look at them, to feel them in order to heal them. And that's an important consideration. And I know it's difficult when you are confronted with frustration because you can't see your friends and then uh, anger and then disappointment or even rage because of the system, the way the governments are handling this pandemic. I get it. We're all um, experiencing these emotions on some level. So what I want to give you today is a strategy, a method, a technique for helping you to deal with this method. Oh, with these emotions, rather, these negative emotions that come up. So again, it's believed, it was once believed that thoughts create emotions. Uh, neuroscience has shown that emotions can actually create thoughts. So if we look at the physical body and what we call a somatic awareness, there's this sense that the emotion resides within the body. Uh, and there's been a number of researchers over the years that have delved deeply into this uh, topic uh, to come to mind, and that is uh, the psychiatrist, the late Dr. David Hawkins, who was a consciousness researcher as well. And he did incredible work in this area. And if this is of interest to you, I would highly recommend reading his books. He's written a number of books. Um, the most uh, important one that you, you want to read or the most too important are Power Versus Force and Letting Go. The book Letting Go will absolutely transform your life in terms of healing those uh, repressed emotions, those childhood wounds, those core childhood wounds. And the second researcher, again, was the late Dr. Uh, Candace Pert who said that the body is the subconscious mind. She discovered uh, opiate receptors in the brain um, and the role of the body um, anchoring itself as the subconscious mind and giving um, prevalence to our emotions residing within the body. So today I wanna to talk about a method that the professor of psychiatry, Dr. Dan Siegel in the US um, uses this wonderful system uh, or this method called name it uh, to tame it. So the idea is that when we experience any sort of negative emotion, whether it be anger, fear, anxiety, sadness, depression, that by naming the emotion, we distance ourselves from the emotion. We create a, a, a space around the emotion. I used this metaphor recently in talking to someone from the UK who is in a similar field. And I said to her uh, as an analogy that in using this method, it's almost like a moat around a castle. We create this, this divide, this space, and we separate ourselves from the emotion instead of becoming um, entrenched, embroiled um, with the emotion. And so I just want to read you a couple of points which are really important in order for us to understand this before I get into the method. And so when we experience significant internal tension and anxiety by using this method, we can actually reduce that tension within our body by 50%. 
And that's a big call. And again, Dr. Dan Siegel, um, S-I-E-G-E-L, um, recommends that this method um, can actually reduce stress within our lives by up to 50%. So the point is, is that if we can see the emotion, we do not have to become the emotion. So we don't have to say, um, I am angry or I am fearful, but rather become aware of the emotion and, and create that sense of separation. So noticing and naming our emotions creates this separation or this distance or what I call the moat around the castle. Um, and so the key is to acknowledge the emotions as they happen. So when you experience fear, when you experience anger, rather than try to flee from these emotions. And listen, we've been fleeing from these emotions our entire life because we were never taught how to properly process them. So what happens? We become adults and suddenly we're in therapy. Um, and it's, it's only then that we're taught how to process our emotions or we're in a relationship and our partner mirrors our childhood wounds and suddenly we're in therapy and we're taught how to do it. Now, I'm not suggesting that it's too late by that stage, but wouldn't it be better that as children, when we experience negative emotions, that we are taught, whether it be at schools or by parents, how to um, comfortably, safely, and in a healthy environment, process these emotions, rather than the core emotions becoming trapped in our physical body, as Dr. Candace Pert suggested. So the method is, if you are experiencing anger, for example, and the anger comes up, all you simply do is name the anger. So you might say something like, and this is the method that I use, adapted from Dr. Dan Siegel. So if I'm experiencing anger, I will say something along the, the following lines as the anger emerges. Here is anger. Anger is here. So I've identified the anger and I'll say its name. Anger is here. And by doing so, I'm creating that separation between me and the anger. Now, that's a better way to frame it instead of saying, I am angry, because in the next moment, you could be happy. You could get a text or a phone call that you've won the lottery. And suddenly you've moved from anger to elation. So are you still angry? No, you were angry a moment ago, but suddenly now you're experiencing um, enthusiasm, excitement and joy as a result of the news that just came in. So by identifying with our anger, that isn't exactly who we are because anger or the emotion that we experience are transient. They move through our nervous system and the key is to recognize that we can be angry one moment, but not identify as the anger. Rather, we identify that the anger is moving through us. So once again, the method is, as the emotion surfaces, um, move into the body and notice where the emotion is sitting. Is it residing in your chest? Is it in your abdomen? Is it in your throat? Is it anywhere else in your body? And just get a, a real rough sense of it and then name the emotion that you're experiencing. So you might say, once again, um, here is anger. Anger is here. Now, I go a little step further because what I've noticed personally, and I've also noticed this with coaching clients, is that sometimes the anger um, will be so quick that it'll produce a corresponding thought um, so quickly. And so I get confused as to whether I'm identifying with the physical anger in my body or the thought. So I try and identify both of them at the same time. So I'll say, um, anger is here, here is anger. Then I'll say, oh, I've noticed the thought of anger as well. Anger is talking. So it'll be uh, a series of conversations that might be uh, going on in my head. So to use an example, if I'm driving along the freeway and then a, uh, 
a rude motorist cuts me off in traffic and I get really angry at them and I beat my horn. Suddenly I'm, I'm in this sense of rage and I feel tension and I feel um, this sense of anger in my chest. So I move into it really quickly. I just notice that it doesn't need to be a meditative practice, just something really quick. Notice the anger in the chest. I notice it. I notice I'm really angry at this person and then I name it. Here is anger. Anger is here. Now, what might happen in the ensuing moments is that there'll be a, a number of thoughts going through my head. So it might be the thought, how, how dare he or she cut me off? Gee, they're so rude, uh, and so on. So rather than get caught up in the trail of thoughts, I, I simply say to myself, um, identify with the thoughts that are taking place in my mind. So I, I say something to the extent of anger is talking. So here is anger. Anger is talking. So what I'm really doing is distancing myself from the anger and almost um, I'm giving anger. Uh, I, I'm identifying it. I'm screening the angle, uh, screening the anger. I'm, I'm labeling it as opposed to owning the anger instead of saying, gee, I'm so angry at that motorist for cutting me off. How rude of them. Oh, I'm just so angry. So if I identify that the anger is a transient emotion, a transient feeling, and rather than becoming tangled with the emotion, I'm merely separating myself and creating a divide and, and a space. And listen, what I've found personally in, in practicing this for, for many, many years, and also with coaching clients, is that the emotion simply um, subdues. It, um, I, I decouple myself from the emotion. So I no longer become embroiled. And as I move into my chest or region of the body where the emotion is residing, I generally feel the emotion begin to settle. Now, that's not to say that the emotion won't return because it may return. But every time we practice this method or technique, we are literally shaving a level off our consciousness, our former consciousness. We are rewiring our nervous system. We are training our nervous system to screen for the anger or screen for the sadness, screen for the anxiety, whatever the negative emotion you are identifying with. And subsequently, as we keep practicing this method over time, we uh, relax in our approach of being triggered. Again, it's not to say that we won't be triggered again, but we become identified with the trigger and create a space of awareness around it instead of becoming, uh, again, embroiled or entangled with the emotion. So I hope you find that uh, helpful. So once again, it's about naming and taming the emotion. So name it to tame it. So when the emotion comes up for you, identify in your body where the emotion is. And generally, this could be anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute in terms of this whole practice or this whole method. The whole method should take anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds. Um, and so you notice where the emotion is residing in the body, then um, name and tame the emotion. So here is anger. Anger is here. And if you wish to go that step further, because you've noticed the corresponding thoughts begin to take voice or, or shape in your mind, you might say something like anger is talking or anxiety is talking. And just practice this for a while. Practice it for a week or two and see how you feel. See if you notice a shift. And if you do, I'd certainly love to hear from you, whether via email or leaving me a comment down below. And so once again, um, thank you for joining me. And I do hope that you found this uh, process, this technique um, helpful. And uh, my name is Tony Factory, and thank you once again.